What's up, Duelists? Yesterday, you saw me play DD Warrior Lady Dragons. Today, I'm playing a much wilder, much crazier version of the Dragon deck. I'm playing my Chaos Dragons deck list for Edison format. This is one of the more fun takes on this deck that I've ever built. I've built this deck a couple years ago. I played a video with it. It's like one of the first videos I uploaded on the channel. And I'm here to try it out and see if it just holds up to what I thought was good in Edison two years ago, I guess. I don't know. It's got a lot of broken cards and Dimensional Alchemist to loop them. So hopefully it's strong. Hopefully we get some Ws. And if not, oh well, we got an eight man full of content. I am going to a tournament this weekend, the Edison tournament at Xanadu with the Starlight DD Crow as the prize, which sounds super hype, honestly, because I would love to win a Starlight DD Crow myself personally. And I'm hoping to win a Starlight DD Crow. And this is one of the decks that I could see myself playing. Am I going to play this deck? Probably not because I don't own an emergency teleport. So probably not. But I could see myself playing a variant of dragons or something like that at the tournament. So I'm just testing with these cards to, to stay warm, basically, for that tournament. And then, of course, in October, October 7th, RBET Orlando, the biggest Edison tournament this year, is coming to Orlando at Versus Games. Uh, Shonen Jump Champion, Dark End for the prize. We got custom mats. The mat designs are looking insanely immaculate. I will be leaking them sometime in the next few days. Of course, if you guys want to sign up for this, please do. The signups are filling up fast. So, uh, yeah, sign up for RBET Orlando. All right, we got a match. We got a match. All of the cards in this deck are limited. That's one thing you should note. It's a bunch of limited cards and three Kaias. And we got round one versus John Boggs. Boggs Bonnie. That is that that's a joke. I am telling joke now. This is like the fourth eight man I've played today. We've just been hitting them like the fucking crack pipe. I'm not gonna lie, they've been popping off like crazy. I don't record some of them. I do record some of them. Some of them I record and then I get mad and then I switch off the recording. Some of them I record and then I win and it wasn't like very fun, so I I don't post it, but um for the most part you know, we're just out here. We're just out here vibing, you know? We're just out here vibing. What is Sangin even searching this deck? I don't fucking know. I don't even know. Upstart Goblin? I'll take that. I'll take that extra thousand, especially when we got Gores. Sangin's pretty good. Oh, we got Gear Frame. Okay. We got Gear Frame, Search Fortress, or Peacekeeper, or Force even, potentially. Looks like it's Gear Frame, Search Fortress, kind of as we expected. We are going to search with Sangin here. He is going to attack. There is no shot. He does not attack my Sangin here. There's no shot. There's no shot. He doesn't attack my Sangin. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. What are you typing? Doesn't activate. Doesn't start a chain. Yeah. So. Uh, yep. That's how that works. All cool. We are going to be able to drop Gores this turn as well, which is nice. It's going to be two darks towards our dark armed. Please attack with the gear frame. Ah, damn. All right. Alas. Here we are. Kind of chilling and vibing, if you think about it. I'm not sure what we're going to search. We could search Mind Master. Hmm. Hold up. We could search Mind Master. We could search Phantom. We could search Dimensional Alchemist. I, I think Mind Master is unironically the best search <laughs> i think it's unironically the best search because he's gonna attack for 1800 we're gonna drop gores and then be able to synchro with my gores token so that's kind of cool you know that's just that's that's tight yeah <laughs> i i don't know if he's gonna have removal spells but we'll be able to synchro which is cool right guys right we'll be able to synchro which is cool right guys right Right? Please don't set that many back row. You can set like one back row, but don't set like two back row. Come on. You really don't think I have Heavy Storm? You really don't think I have Heavy Storm here? I for sure have Heavy Storm. It's on top of my deck. I know you guys can't see it quite yet, but I can see it. You don't think I have Heavy Storm? Well, you'd be right. <laughs> you'd be correct. God damn it. Okay. Hmm. Well... There are obvious plays here. There are obvious plays. He's representing Torrential Tribute. So, 
I think we just switch the gores and attack the fortress. Yep, yeah, he's going to take 200. He's going to lose his gear frame. Yeah, go to damage. You going to flip limiter? That's aggressive. But I'll take it. So now instead of getting one card, we get two cards for our cores, which is pretty strong. Um, <clears throat> main phase two, I'm going to synchro into a defense position colossal fighter. So I hope this just works. Question mark. And this will be a third dark for our dark armed if it hits the grave. So there's that. I could also go Thought Ruler. Ooh, Thought Ruler's kind of cool. But I think I'm just going to go Colossal in defense. I think this is the safest. It's going to be the hardest for him to handle this. Gear Frame is destroyed now. Yep. Cool. And just like that, we shall pass. I think we're up a significant margin here. I think we're up, up a good amount. We did lose some life points, but he's out his limiter, which is his big shove tool. And he has at least two more upstart in his deck. So we could potentially gain some life this game, Kappa. <laughs> we could potentially gain some life this game. We're just going to set more back row. Why? Why would we do why would we do this? Why would we do such things? Oh, we are going to think now. Thinking is now part of the prerequisite. All right. Oh, now we're in the main phase. Now we're in the main phase we thought. Now we attack. Ojama Trio. Yeah, sure. Summon the Ojama tokens to our side of the field. Where are the Ojamas? Cool. So they are 0, 1,000. He's got to be playing like Burn or something. Because that's the only thing that makes sense now. Okay, that being the case, we understand the strategy. It's Machina Burn. Being at 4,600 is actually quite bad. I've ran the numbers. It's actually quite bad for us. Okay. That being said, I am fully confident full sending. So we are going to summon Alchemist. We're going to activate his special technique to banish the top card of our deck. Nice. And we hit a strong card as well there. So I'm hoping to have some answers. Please don't magic cylinder me. Please just, please just lose your fortress. Please don't magic cylinder me. Okay, he's going to take 300. He's going to destroy something. He gets to destroy Colossifier if he wants to, but then we get to blow up his whole field. So I'm hoping he just destroys the Colossifier here. He could go after our back row. Would be annoying. Not going to lie. But, you know, we're out here, so that's the vibe. He may be sitting on dimension walls. In that case, he wouldn't want to destroy the Colossal Fighter. No. It would not miss timing. I don't know why it would, but... I wouldn't miss timing here. He's going to destroy Colossal. Perfect. Perfect scenario for us. We attack for 1800. Main phase two. You know who it is. He's back. Back again. He's back, baby. He's back. We're blowing up back row. We're blowing them all up. Starlight Road, get that shit out of my face. Banish Colossal, target the back row. 
Oh my gosh. I am living right now. I am living. Now we have a lot of options here. They're all good. I'm going to gold sark while I'm at it too. Gold sark is going to go find me. I think emergency teleport. That card is good. All right. Cool. Well, we're crushing, so it's always a good sign. Can't possibly lose from this point, I don't think. But crazier things have happened, so I guess we're figuring it out. Itali would be a really good draw because it would clear these tokens, which are otherwise very annoying for me. They're just sitting there. Just sitting there. Just sitting there. All right, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, let's just blow that shit up. I don't care if it's chainable. Whatever. Chain link two. It's running more. All right. Whatever. Pass turn. No reason to leave the DL in attack position, take unnecessary damage. It's gotta be some sort of fucking chain burn thing. Oh, drama trio is weird. I don't understand what that's there for, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Right? Right? Of course we'll figure it out, right? Perhaps? Man, I love this deck. It's just literally all fucking banned cards and shit. <laughs> it's it's actually just busted. <laughs> like Oh man. Ooh. What a pleasant surprise. Add this to our hands. Activate Alchemist. Response, question mark. Chain. Chain e Telly to play around Torrential. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it's done. Krevin's is, or Alchemist is going to resolve. Banishing the top card of our deck. It's another Alchemist. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, we have game in eight different ways. These are two stars, right? Correct? Yep. Level two. We're going to make the fabled Starbucks Dragon to play around Torrential. I am going to now activate my forbidden card. Giant Trunade. See if he has a response. I'm going to just let this happen. I don't need to reveal return. I don't know if it's better to reveal return or Drago, but this is game, so. GG. All right, what do we got for machines? That is a lot of back row he had. That is a lot of back row. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. I do like Cyber Dragon. <laughs> That's a good card versus machines. I do like Dust Tornado and Space Typhoon here. Both very good cards as well. Pulling the rug has applications. I think we could bring it in. I feel confident enough bringing it in. Mind Control has applications too. We can Mind Control Machina Fortress and Synchro with Mind Master and Machina Fortress into a powerful 8-star Synchro. One of our powerful 8-star Synchros here. Why do I have Power Tool Dragon in my extra deck? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. I should have Armory Arm because I can actually make that card. This extra deck is wrong. <laughs> Alas, here we are. Um, Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Prime Material Dragon's going to be good because he's he's got to be playing like Burn or some shit. So I think these five cards are good. We're going to make a few adjustments to the main deck here. I think we can give up on one of the Alchemists. He has one of the better cards. I'm going to give up on Achaeus as well. It's naturally against my intuition to leave in Brain Control, Return, and Solemn versus Burn. But those cards are just ridiculous. <laughs> like that being said, I'll probably I'll probably take out Return. Maybe uh, Morphing Jar versus Burn is not the best. It says I didn't get to pull off the jank that time. I have no idea what it is, but I saw Ultimate Offering and I saw a Jama Trio, so it's got to be like Burn or something. I don't really know. Maybe Giant Trunade. 
because we're bringing in some spell and trap hate. He says, but watch out. I'm I'm assuming the Ojama trio means some type of burn. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. We're going to find out this game, and if we have to go to game three, we can adjust accordingly, but I'm pretty sure we're big chilling here. This hand sucks, but we have card destruction, so it's fine if you think about it that way. He gets to go first. Depending on what we draw, we may or may not be in the camp of card destruction in our hand. I don't really love discarding Dark Armed, but it does make our Phantom of Chaos really good off, off rip, so. I may do that. I may just card destruction this shit. I may not even set the Dust Tornado. What the fuck is this? Okay, so. We've got Future Fusion, which is gonna reveal Chimera Tech Overdrive. It has to reveal Chimera Tech Overdragon. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense if you don't have Chimera Tech Overdragon. We are thinking here for a very long time. Okay, there is the Chimera Tech. But what this does for him is... Yeah, I don't have Herald of Green. I don't... Just, I don't. <laughs> I don't have it. It's not in my Chaos Dragons deck. I could have. I got the Elks, I guess. So there's the Cyber Dragon. What else are we sending, though? I guess we'll find out. Another Cyber Dragon. Another Cyber Dragon. Okay. Hmm. This is probably, now that I'm looking at it, DNA Surgery. We're sending all the UFO turtles. Okay. Yeah, this looks like DNA surgery. He's sent quite a few cards here. He'll probably want to get a fortress in the grave if he doesn't have access to it already. Third proto cyber. Wow. This guy can't be summoned by limit reverse. If I remember correctly, I think limit reverse is 1000 or less. So it has to be call of the haunted. He's sending both Cyber Dragons. He must not have the DNA surgery in his hand. Either that or he must have Call of the Haunted or like Pot of Avarice or something. Eight. Okay. Interesting. So that means the Over Dragon will be 6400. But if it is summoned, it's going to destroy the Future Fusion. And alongside it, everything else he controls, including itself. He's going to set a lot of cards... Okay. Well, we drew Heavy Storm, so I'm going to play it. I mean, I'm going to play it. Solemn Judgment. Okay. Hmm. Now, it's a question of whether or not we want to set the Dust Tornado before we card destruction. I don't really think we do. I think we just want a card destruction. Draw four new cards. Draw four. Sick! We drew our own future fusion. I am gonna allure here because if we draw Phantom of Chaos, it's like GG. We did not. We we're gonna banish. Most likely Tragodia. I'm gonna try for my own future fusion. I think that is the game plan. And reveal five-headed dragon. He's got space typhoon. Okay. So there's two of the back row we played through. Uh, let's go Dialk. Activate. Pass the top card. Hopefully we don't hit Krebins. We hit Wyvern. That's good. So if Dialk dies, we can add back Wyvern. It says think. Oh, okay. Um... On summon. Oh. Okay. Does he have trap hole? I was going to trench hole. Okay. I was going to banish with priority, but that's fine. That's chill. Um. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just pass. Awkward game state. His last back row might be ultimate offering. Uh, 
Yeah, so priority alchemist chain link one, then torrential chain link two, since he's destroyed chain link two, he misses his timing. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. If he torrentialed it without me activating it, then I would have added back the track, but I'm just assuming he was chaining it to me activating the effect, assuming I was doing it with priority, which is fine. I would have done it with priority there anyway. Motherfucker, he has a gear frame. Okay, so this is bad. Because if he has machine limiter removal, he wins. <laughs> Which is crazy. Unlikely, though. Alright, we're going to take 1800. What does UFO Turtle get? Cyber Phoenix, maybe? Next turn, he gets the Over Dragon, which blows up his field. I don't know if he realizes that. But maybe there's a way to negate it. Prime Material Dragon is interesting. I may yet play that card. I'll pass the turn. Here he gets the Over Dragon, and the Over Dragon is mandatory, so it doesn't blow up his entire field. Um. I'm going to copy this so he knows it. Effect is okay. You have to send all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he knows what that card does. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is good, but you have to overload into it. Yeah. It nukes your own board when it's summoned off Future Fusion. That's why people don't play it, generally speaking. Um, If you don't summon it off Future, it's pretty good. So, like, overload Fusion. But off Future... It nukes your whole board, LMAO. <laughs> yeah. But if you summon it on, yeah. I think our opponent is. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. There goes everything. Uh, it was DNA surgery. Okay. So we did learn a little bit about it. But I think he just, he kind of self-owned in a sense. And now we just have to find a dragon or the otherwise powerful card, which our deck is full of. Even another alchemist here is very good for us. Here's green gadget. That's okay. So green gadget gets him to another gadget. He can pitch that to summon fortress and we will die to limiter removal, but... We have Torrential, so I'm hoping he just commits. He probably won't, but he might. You never know. Yeah, he won't. All right. That's annoying because it's like pressure I have to spend cards on. He's actually in a good position still. That being said, I think we're okay if we draw Dragon specifically. Uh, dragon we can summon, like Wyvern or Infernal Dragon. Even Drago is okay. I think that's not very good. Well, I have to spend cards to deal with the green gadget, which is fucking annoying. <sighs> that is annoying, isn't it? Is there any way I could bait him into summoning more? Probably not. All right. Unfortunate, but we're going to have to do it. Etelio Krevins. Tribute for Prime Material. Attack the Green Gadget. Dealing a thousand. Unfortunate. But if we draw a dragon next turn, we might be okay. 
I hope he summons the gadget and then pitches a special fortress. Like, I hope that's his game plan. Hmm. But it's not looking good for your boy here. What if he gets cold feet and just dumb, doesn't summon the fortress? That'd be kind of funny. Damn. Okay. Well, I knew he drew the red gadget this turn. I have to wait for him to normal summon another monster. Alas. Never lucky. Dragon one time for the fans? Would be nice. Another wyvern would be nice. That is a dragon. It's not the one we wanted. Okay. Let's keep goading him into playing into Torrential. Hopefully he summons another monster soon. My graveyard is okay. I would like to draw Phantom of Chaos. That'd be probably the best possible draw. Or Red Eyes Wyvern. Actually, Red Eyes Wyvern would be the best possible. Yeah, that would for sure be the best draw. Alchemist will be good. He attacks. We're going to lose our Mind Master. Things don't look good for the home team this game. All right. Ooh. Shiver me timbers. I guess we get a make Chimera Tech after all. Let's go. Nice. Big damage time. Please connect. Ooh, that is good. Okay. Okay. Okay, one more turn. Prage. Prage. He could have Machina Force. That is a card that could be in his hand that's been just sitting there forever. He could have, like, Smashing Ground or something like that. Um, he could have this shit. But that's fine because it's going to play into Chimera or Torrential, I'm assuming. Please just pass one time for the fans. Don't have another machine. God damn it, he does. Of course. Well, I have to torrential here. You just don't have the juice. Does he have Solemn? Gross if he has Solemn. All right, we saved the torrential, and it paid off somewhat. <laughs> it, paid off. it was all right. It wasn't the worst. I want an alchemist so bad. That'd be the best draw. Please give me an alchemist. Please. Oh, let's go. Fuck yeah. Such a good draw. I'll activate it. Fuck it. 1800, let's go. No D prison, one time. Nice. GG's. All it took was my opponent blowing up five of his own cards with Chimera Tech over Dragon. So I'm gonna add Cycleroid. LMAO. Uh, sick deck. I think the deck was cool. He does have Overload. He does have Jinzo. Super Poly. That's fire. Cyber Phoenix. Yep. This deck is cool. This deck is cool. GG's to John Box. All right. Next match. Next match. We had our Jank versus Jank off round one. I'll see if my jank can hang with the real shit round two. Okay. Who who's up? Hmm. 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 Uh I play the winner of Gingerilla versus Yak. So we gotta find those two guys. They're probably still playing. They are. Okay. Ah uh, yeah. Looks like very serious gaming from both of these guys. They both showed up thinking, yeah, we gotta try hard. It's it's eight man in the Edison server. Got the Norlaris value deck and we got consecrated deck. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, the consecrated got run over by Fossil Dyna. It's now Conduit's turn. It looks like he's on DD Warrior Lady, so he's probably playing Lightshorn or Fairies. Gonna clear the Dyna. This DD Warrior Lady is a liability, though, on 
Ginger Ale is turned, he can just summon Armed Wing, run over the Warrior Lady with the Greffer, and go direct with the Armed Wing. So, we got Liability Gaming happening right now. Little bit weird, Conduit has two monsters in his extra deck. Um, I can't condone this, just finish your deck. Just put cards in your extra deck, there's really no reason to not have cards in your extra deck. Kind of tells me that Conduit's not playing a real deck a little bit. I think Gingerilla is more likely to be on a real deck here. Although this is arguably not real. Um, depends on how real. I mean, it did win Nats in Europe. So it could be legit. I don't fucking know. Either way, I don't really want to play against either of these decks. But I would much prefer to play against the deck with two extra deck cards. <laughs> Alright, here comes Armed Wing. Keegan making me nervous. Uh, don't watch this back. Don't watch this back about the two two extra deck cards. So DD Warrior Lady. Gonna trade with Dark Greffer, undoubtedly. Didn't activate the Greffer before, so the hand is good. We are banishing DD Warrior Lady here. He's gotta take 200. DD Warrior Lady should be banished. They should correct this. Looks like Gingerilla is gonna correct that real quick. Cool, cool, cool. Main phase two, summon Armageddon Knight. All right, should have summoned that main phase one. Just missed out on 1400 damage and actually lethal. <laughs> Straight up, because you can just go 1400 plus another 2300. That's game. Um, Yeah, that was a missed lethal opportunity from Gingerilla there. It might come back to bite him if there's a Shining Angel here and a Christia. It might just, it might be really bad for him. I guess we'll find out though. What have we got? Big Thonk turn. Grand Mole. Okay, well you're you're dead on board. So that's not it's not a safe Grand Mole. You're dead to the next value activation. And you haven't had any back row. So I think this game's Jover. Yeah, I just think it's a Jover. I don't think there's anything to be done. We're going to summon Phantom first. Copy Norlaris. Do we have DD Crow for this? No. There goes the hand. I would have gone for a game, because I ain't no bitch. It pays a thousand. Let's see if I would have won. Okay. Christia. Grandma. Christia. Caius. Alchemist. Battlefader. I wouldn't have won. I would have lost the Battlefader. He doesn't draw a card. Yeah, you don't draw. It's only the player who activates Norlaris. And that's the game. Alright, cool. Good shit. Good shit. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Game's over. Yeah. Looks like game anyway. Exactly. Armageddon Knight gets summoned since Plague. And, uh, yeah. Misplayed hard. Yeah, you have two cards in your extra deck. That can't be right. I'm I'm sorry, it just it just can't be. I'm gonna message Gingerilla, tell him I play you. Now against Norlaris, I might have a good matchup. I might not. So I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. People gotta stop listening to recommendations to play Chaos Fairies. That deck is bad. Just play the regular Fairy deck. Like, <laughs> you just have these dead Battle Fader Caius bullshit. Just makes your hands super clunky. Grand Mole is just another normal summon. You know what I mean? You got locked up there pretty hard. Alright. We now face off against Cinderella. I messaged him that I am hosting. C 
cool. All right, we got him. Good shit. Good luck. Have fun. I'm picking paper again. Damn, I lost it. Oh, well. Hopefully, I don't get Norlaris turn one without a Wyvern in my hand. That's the only hope. That's the only hope is that we can see Wyvern early enough. Alas, card destruction is terrible in this matchup. This hand is very bad. But we can allure, get Dark Arm banished, and then maybe find ourselves an Alchemist. Yeah, that's good. Um, oh, this is going to be a hard matchup with this hand. This hand is very bad. Banishes the Dark Creator. Okay. That's a good card to see banished because I hate facing off versus that guy. He's too powerful. It's like one of the most underutilized cards in the format. It's actually disgusting. It's like incredibly broken. Oh my god, he's just giving it to me. Thank you, base god. Alright, well, we shotgun the allure. Oh my god. Thank you, base god. Banish the red med. He could have Sirocco. But I actually have a play that's pretty sick. Next turn, I can gold sark red med and then I can return it. So I'm going to attack for 1900. Uh, main phase 2. Set this. End phase. Reveal. And pass the turn. Cool, cool, cool. We've got... Yeah, we've got the play. He could have like Heavy Storm fucking Norlaris shit. But then at least we get a Wyvern in the grave. And I think if he had Norlaris shit, he would have gone for it last turn, but he might not. You know, he just might not have it. I don't know. He could go M phase discard Norlaris. I think he was representing Gores there. Heavy Storm. Fuck. That is annoying. That's really bad. Yeah, and he does have the Sirocco. Okay, that's pretty bad for us. I cannot lie, that's pretty fucking bad. But we can draw red eyes, so there's that. That was really cringe. Passes the turn. All right, we drew Caius. Cool. Um, I think straight up, it's just like card destruction. It's either that or it's summon Wyvern, then card destruction. And hope to hit red med. But I think it's just card destruction because we need the most draws. So, discard our hand. Draw four. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, we did hit the red med in the first three draws, so we would have had it, but we wouldn't have had a dragon to reveal. So, he would have been able to do his thing next turn. I'm just going to pass. I have Trigodia into Caius. I could have set the Alchemist to get back Dark Arms. Maybe that was better. Interesting. I guess we'll figure out what's better here and what's not. Um, I'll always take life points. Looks like he's playing 37, which is interesting as well. He can phantom copy Dark Creator, but it doesn't really get him anywhere. It just gets him to a Gores in play, which is more damage, but still fine for us. Dude, come on. Come on! You've got to be fucking kidding me. All right. Yeah, we did card destruction, the deck that loves to get card destruction, so. I should have probably set Alchemist. I'm trying to think of the way we get out of this. I think it involves Crash Alchemist, Abag Dark Armed, add uh, Special Trigodia, Pitch Dark Armed, Steal His Dark Armed. I think that's how we get out of this. But it, it's annoying, to say the least. 
because then he still has plays. But we're not we're not completely shut out. If we draw a dragon, it's good too. We can banish the dark arm main two and then special red med and then special out the Drago and then we can reveal the dragon. Here comes Dark Greffer. As it stands, we might not even get the luxury. Um, he may just have the OTK setup. Sure. Yeah, so this is going to be able to send another value, I'm assuming. He should send a plague. So yeah, I don't even think we're going to get a chance to make that cool of a play. We'll just have to figure out a way to... He's going to send plague, okay. If he doesn't go for a game, it's good for us. This is genuinely really good for us if he doesn't go for a game. It looks like he's going to. I don't know if there's a way for us to get Caius in the grave or to get more darks in the grave. Armed wing, okay. Wait, is this lethal? Stack for plague, okay. Is this lethal? As it stands, 4,088. No, it's not lethal. It's lethal with the plague in attack position. So it depends on what he wants to see. He's going to put it in defense position. So it's not lethal. We can actually survive this, but then we won't be able to crash Alchemist plus summon Trag. Okay. Um. <laughs> Interesting. Emergency teleport doesn't quite get us there, does it? Goyo Guardian. All right, that's annoying. So we take 2,000, take 2,300, special summon Trigodia. He can steal it and then deal us 28. Yeah, did he want it? No effect. Okay, interesting. Sure. I'll say, okay, he said no effect. Huh. If we can get to emergency teleport, I think we're okay. Holy shit, I think we did it. I think we're all right. Wait, hold the fuck up. I think we're okay. Um, So we go... Alchemist Crash, I back Dark Armed. Etilly into Krevins. Crash that shit. Is there a better way to do this? Etilly, sack for Caius, target his Dark Arm. No, no, it just has to be this. So we go Alchemist, Etilly first, so we don't hit the Krevins. Activate Alchemist to keep our life total high. Banish. Crash into Sirocco. Take 200. Add back Dark Arms. Crash into Sirocco. Take 800. Main Phase 2. Special Dark Arms. Effect. Pop. 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 We want to hit Goyo. We want to hit arm, dark armed, and we want to hit armed wing, armed wing. Uh, eh. That's probably a mistake leaving the Sirocco. But here we are. We've already normal summoned. We can't Caius the Sirocco this turn. He gets Phantom of Chaos in one turn. Hmm. I wonder if we're supposed to special red eyes in defense. He doesn't have phantom yet. Plague is gone. If we special summon red eyes in defense, sending Vayu kills us. So yeah, no, we just got to pass. Sending Vayu kills us either way. So Armageddon Knight kills us, which is bad news. He does get phantom next turn, but I can potentially win. So... I should have killed Sirocco instead of Armed Wing. That's a mistake on my part. That was really bad. Okay. So he can crash with the Vayu. Yeah, I messed up. I messed up. 
Yeah, that was a mistake. I recognized it almost immediately upon doing it too, which is unfortunate. But if I had hit Soroka there, I would have been fine. I still am okay-ish if I draw a monster. But not okay enough. That's funny. I'm at exactly 800. Okay, that's cool. Um, live and you learn. Make a few mistakes here and there, but uh, definitely going to bring in the Drago. I messed up 9 Soroka. I think if I hit Soroka, I win. I genuinely think I might win that. Because I can put him below 8,000. He says, I don't even know what the fuck you're playing. Well, that's good. It's definitely good. Threatening Roar is, like, not bad in this matchup. Mind Control is actually, like, pretty fucking crazy in this matchup. Because we can, like, steal a Dark Creator and, like, activate it and shit. Um... Yeah, this matchup is bad. Like, it's definitely bad. He's got Gold Sark, so Mind Crush is good. I think Smashing Ground is, like, decent, too. It's, like, a decent top deck. We can side out Heavy Storm, Giant Trinade, and Cold Wave. So that's three cards that can just come out immediately. I like... I hate card destruction in this matchup. I think it's very bad. I think our card destruction did so much more damage to him than it did for us, basically. I'm going to side out Morphing Jar for, I th I think, one of these cards. I think Mirror Force is probably the best. Deck Dev is, like, decent in this matchup. But it, like, sets up his value shit, which I don't like. And Soul Release can be okay, too. Um, I feel like if there is a matchup to side in Soul Release, it is this matchup. So I should try and find a place to bring it in. It's going to be hard to find room for it, though. My deck is pretty packed. Trigodia is pretty bad. It could have got us out of that game, but you saw. Cool. So we're going first. We open up with kind of a mediocre hand. Uh, I think we just set call and pass and hope we don't die. We could get OTK'd or Norlarist. But if we don't, then we have a pretty good setup here. Like, actually pretty good. We can go Cyber Dragon, Krevins into Black Rose. Um, Chaos Sorcerer. We can do a lot of cool shit here. Ooh, Gold Sark is probably the best draw. So yeah, we special Cyber Dragon. Caius the shit out of his monster. Hit him for 5 million. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. Special Summon Cyber Dragon. Sack for Caius. Target his monster. Necrogarna. Deal a thousand. <sighs> Big think moment. I think we just attack. I don't think we need to deal the extra 2100 yet. I think we deal 24. Save the call in case he has gores. Gold Sark. Find us future fusion, obviously. And then just pass the turn. He does play Burial. But if I remember correctly, I'm not sure if Burial can hit spells. I think he can only hit monsters, but I could be wrong. It might be able to hit our future fusion here. That being said, I mean, he's under a shitload of pressure. Like, I don't see how he's ever winning this. Hmm. We can go Dark End Pop. Yeah, I think this just wins. So we're going to go Dark End. Activate. Uh, 2100 and 1600. Pulls up the Vayu. Special Summon Sorcerer. Banishing Cyber and Krevins. Um, battle Phase. 2100. Activate call, special summon Caius, attack for 2400, and then 2300 with the sorcerer. All right, sick. That was awesome. I think that went kind of perfectly. Now we just gonna be kind of on our A game versus the good shit that his deck can do. I don't think there's really anything worth citing here if we just run it back. 
Cool. Yeah. Cyber Dragon could have been... Like, the second one could have been a good inclusion here. Yeah. Alas. Here we are. Uh, Rhoda. So that's for Dark Greffer. Unless he's going Armageddon Knight, he's going a little bit passive here. No, he's going Greffer for sure. Okay. He's going to set up to OTK us, which is pretty bad. Pitch special. Oh, he might Norlaris us turn one. But that's okay as long as he doesn't have value shit. Never mind. Send Norlaris. Yep. Phantom. Norlaris boom. That's pretty bad. That's the literal nuts. Yep. Damn. Okay, well, we got to top deck something good here. Either that or we got to hope he doesn't have Sirocco. Okay. Does he have Sirocco too? No, he doesn't. Okay, so he just draws a new card and he passes the turn. So we have a Red Eyes in the Grave. If we draw a Wyvern, that's pretty good. That's not very good. We just pass. We don't want to give him an outlet to summon a Sirocco. Dark Creator is bad. Armageddon's bad for us. But he's out of Dark Creator already. He's out Dark Arm, so. Phantom is pretty bad. Allure, he's going to go for Allure. Interesting. That's pretty good for him, actually. I think just filtering is good. It'd be funny if he didn't have a Dark. Oh, he's thinking here, so that means he has multiple Darks. That's annoying. Uh, he didn't have the absolute nuts, so we do have like some leeway here to top deck out of it, but our deck doesn't really top deck that well outside of like Future Fusion or cards that were in our hand at that moment, like Gores and shit. He's going to banish Phantom. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, this is good for us. Uh, he's he's going to... I probably would have banished the Sirocco there and then gone for Phantom, copy the Dark Creator to bring out the... Refer, but you know this is fine this is okay this works out well for us i think we may miss on alchemist though which is bad drawing alchemist is not great but it, we got a card deeper which is good our gores is gone so this attack is just going to go through it's going to pass please get me a card deeper find me a wyvern please All right, well, at least we're not drawing a Dead Soul release. Copium. I messed up that game not blowing up the Sirocco. I'm so mad about that. Uh, this should have been my match, but it still can be. I just need to get kind of lucky here. That's a card. Okay. Hmm. Do we have Plague? Do we take this attack? Yeah, I think we do. Summon Armageddon? Okay. This can send Plague. And he can set up for Stardust next turn or Bryonic next turn. He's just going to send a Sirocco. It's, it's got to mean Plague is in his hand, right? <sighs> what a draw. Okay, so we can go... Infernal Vanish for Red Med. Red Med run over Armed Wing. He summons Plague. He bounces both, but he can't beat us, so. This isn't the best situation, but it could be a lot worse. He's going to take 500. He's got to have Plague in hand. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense. He still has one more Phantom, which can copy Dark Arm, which kills us. I'm curious what he's going to go for here. Just switch. And set. Hmm. Okay, well. 
Activate Alchemist. Bro, come on. Should have been Plague. Oof. Yeah. Oh, if he doesn't have Plague, then that alters everything. That's so fucking gross. It definitely should have been Plague there. He can Dark Creator me now. And again, third Phantom is probably game. He might have Gores. That could be really ugly, but I have Mirror Force. Okay, um, I'm just gonna shove with everything. He probably does have Gores, playing like this. Yeah, there's the Gores, okay. What he should do is just switch the Gores to attack and attack the Alchemist. I don't know if he knows this, but that's what he should do. All right, what do we have? Hmm. Very interesting situation we're in. He's thinking way too hard for him to have a clear line here. Mm. Depending on how he plays this, I may let him kill the alchemist. We'll see though. Token to attack. Attack red eyes. This I am much more okay mirror forcing. Because now he has nothing that beats red eyes. So that I am much more okay mirror forcing. He's going to activate Vayu. It's fine. He can make armor master if he wants to. Looks like he's going for another armed wing. In defense, he's just walling up. Summon plague, he drew the plague, okay. Uh, you can make dark end here and just blow up the red eyes. I don't know why he didn't just make stardust dragon and go for game, but this is a play that kind of works. I think we lose now. Unfortunately, he did draw the plague. Damn, I needed to fade like a specific card and now I don't think we have outs. Hold up. Hold up. Let him cook. Activate. Cool. Maybe. Activate. Banish cores. Deal a thousand. Hack over the dark end. Okay, not good, but not dead <laughs> is where we're at. Not good, but not dead. Level four B. Jesus, man. This looker. Ah, it's so fucking annoying. GG's. Ah, jeez. I threw this. I threw so hard. Game one. Damn, that was fucking whack. But that was a good game. That was a good game. I definitely, definitely deserve to lose it. So what the fuck is that brew? That's a good question. We're going to watch the finals of him versus whoever he has to play against. But shout out this deck. I think it's pretty good. I think it's genuinely pretty good. I just think that I played kind of bad. <laughs> shout out to 2021 me for building a cool deck, I guess. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, who is, I think, Coco Bird. Oh, sick. First Gingerilla Finals. Yes. Let's do it. 
Let's fucking do it, bro. Let's fucking do it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. That was fun. That was fun. I don't didn't expect that <laughs> Coco God, yes. We do refer to him as the Coco Coco God. He's he's winner of many eight mans around these parts. If you guys want to play in these eight mans, join the really big Yu-Gi-Oh! Discord. Man, that game was tilting. I think I had like I had it if I just played it a certain way. Maybe I'm not supposed to mirror force that token. Is that crazy? He would have had to draw the plague. You know? He would have had to draw the plague into the dark creator like that, yeah. He attacked the red eyes. That was the weird part. He attacked the red eyes. If I don't mirror force, then he goes dark end pop alchemist. We don't get to add something back because it wasn't destroyed. But then we have Mirror Force, but then he just doesn't have to play into it. He can just still leave the Gores in defense. So no, I think it's right to Mirror Force there. The big misplay was game one not popping Soroko, which I realized like almost immediately. Okay, we're going to Normal Greffer, then Card Destruction. I don't like that play. I think that that's a bad play. But what do I know? We've got Jinzo Relinquished versus... <laughs> Vayu Norlaris in the finals. Shout out my Discord homies. I feel like the Discord's users in the really big Yu-Gi-Oh! Discord are like the best of the best at coming up with cool shit. Cool and entertaining shit. Like, this is why I play Edison format because of people like this. Holy shit, this is fire. So we got a Black Illusion Ritual in the graveyard. That's very good. That means preparation of rights is auto pot of greed at this point. Which I'm assuming Coco Bird is playing. Jinzo Relinquished is... It's that deck. Let me just say it. It's that deck. It's one of my favorite ways to play Relinquished. We do have Sirocco plus Vayu in the graveyard. We have five darks, but two dark creators are already gone. Manju's going to search for the Black Illusion Ritual. That means we have Relinquished in hand. And we're just figuring out the way to go for it. I think Jin... Never mind, we have nothing. Weird to have six cards and no play, I feel. But perhaps Coco Bird's very defense heavy. Although Gores and Fader are already gone, so I'm not necessarily certain what further defense he could have beyond Tragodia. It's possible he's waiting for the Vayu plus Sirocco to make Armed Wing. But I think that leaving the Dark Greffer in play is a liability. So, there's that. Okay. And that's what's happening here. It's getting more value out of the Dark Refer. Potentially even able to send another Bayou. I have a feeling this matchup is going to be very hard for Coco Bird. I have a very strong feeling that he's going to lose this game by a lot. Alas, here we are. Here comes Phantom. Yep. Do we have the main deck, DD Crow? No, we do not. Unfortunate. Yeah, when you're playing Relinquished, you gotta consider DD Crow. This is gonna be a tough one to win. Soul Exchange, Ryza Relinquished, Black Illusion Ritual. Yeah, we definitely should have ritualed out. Definitely should have ritualed out there. Taken that Dark Refer, not giving him the opportunity to use it. Passing and not getting value out of your Relinquished there is very bad. And here's the third Dark Creator. This should be an OTK. Nope. It's not. Banish, Banish. It's not an OTK, but it's top deck something or lose moment. And there's nothing you can top deck. That's going to be game one. We're going to be going to game two here shortly. Uh, yeah, again, you can soul exchange, use Black Illusion Ritual to tribute their monster. But I don't even think that that's necessary. I think you can just Black Illusion Ritual, sacrifice your Manju or one of the cards in your hand, 
special relinquish and just steal his his guy you know okay they're gonna rehost coco bird is gonna forfeit game one and he's gonna rehost notice not in classic mode fucking damn it <laughs> all right Where are they? There it is. Why is Dueling Book like this? Why is it like this? I just want to watch the finals of the 8-man. Why does it need to bug out like that? Kokobert says, first time playing against that deck. It plays the same as the other Norlaris decks. So, you should, you should kind of piece it together. Uh, you just Plague Stack the card you want on top. Norlaris, boom, and then you have a powerful card. DD Crow stops it. Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer stops it. That's about it, really. He says, I'm 3 for 3 for not knowing what the fuck my opponent had been playing. Yeah. Me too, Kappa. Nah. I think the cool thing about Edison is, like, you can get mixed up with some cool shit and you can still have a fun time. It's just, like, a good time. You'd be like, oh, shit, that's a crazy deck. Still happens to me, even, after, like, years of brewing and playing in this format. Hmm. All right. Gingerilla is going second, so no turn one Norlaris bullshit for him. One thing I've noticed is that in these eight mans, people fucking love Norlaris. So I think I'm gonna start bringing some hateful shit for Norlaris in the next few eight mans, cause I've played against them more than I should have. Like I've played against more Norlaris than Black Wings, Vayu Turbo, and Hero Beat combined in these eight mans, which is <sighs> come on, guys, like. <laughs> Norlaris is cool, don't get me wrong. And it can be fun. Uh, Cocoa Bird is getting fucked this game. There's no way he's winning this game, going second, which is a set monster. I don't think his deck is cut out to beat this Norlaris bullshit. Turn 1, Card Trooper Mill 3. Terrible Mills. This is going to play well into Raiko, though, which is most likely the set card on Cocoa Bird's side. It's either that or Sangin. Could also be Jin. Not what I was expecting. I didn't think he was on frogs. But I guess it makes sense seeing both Ryza, Kaias, and Soul Exchange, so. That makes sense. I'm out here. Sacrifice for Vanity's Fiend. Vanity's Fiend doesn't do anything against this deck. They just Norlaris blow up the Vanity's Fiend. This is not a good card to side in this matchup. It's an okay card to side in this matchup. But it's not a good card to side in this matchup. What he should have considered doing was crashing the dupe frog just to get access to treeborn frog. Because you are still in a position to get owned by Norlaris, which is what's happening here. Foolish, send Norlaris. Normal summon Phantom of Chaos. We should have gotten our treeborn frog access. It's very clear he does not know how to play against this deck. I'm gonna target Norlaris. Banish Norlaris. Compulsory. Strong compulsory. Very strong compulsory. So that is that. Now the Vanity's Fiend is looking good. Compulsory is not a card I would have expected out of C Coco Bird's deck. It's not. I just wouldn't have expected it. It's kind of. Kind of a crazy tech. No additional summons, no additional pressure is not ideal. You really need to pressure beyond this. I also think Vanity's Fiend in general in this deck is not very good because you can just gin lock people. So just gin lock them, don't Vanity's lock them. Gin is easier to set up as well. And then you can spend your normal on more high impact things like Caius, Manju, Van uh, Ryza, not Vanity's. Trading gonna pitch Star Creator, draw two. That's gonna give him another. High value, Phantom of Chaos target, but he doesn't have a great way to take use of it. Does he have another Norlaris? No, just another Dark Creator. So, kind of awkwardly stuck here. We'll see if things change. Rhoda can float him into the second Norlaris. But it's possible Cocoa Bird can end the game next turn. We'll see. We shall see. Normal Greffer does buy you a turn, and it does get that Norlaris down, but 
If Kokobert can deal 2,500 damage, then he's fine. If you're a Gingerilla, you should consider putting Dark Arm Dragon in your graveyard. We're going to pitch value. And you should send either Dark Arm Dragon or Norlaris, but I think Dark Arm Dragon is the better send. Because if you get Kaius here, you get you don't die, but you can't activate Norlaris. Um, this isn't the same. But it's still very bad for Gingerilla. He can still activate Norlaris, but he drops to 800 and now Treeborn's in the grave. If there was an enemy controller or a brain control on Cocoa Bird's side, another reason Vanity's Fiend is bad is because it doesn't let you extend with Relinquished in a way that Jin does let you do, because Jin is one-sided. If that makes sense, I'm gonna do a thousand. I'm gonna bounce a swap frizzy frog. Hmm. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, does he have the crow? Crow? One time for the fans? Nope. Nopers. Nope, nope, and nopers. And that's gonna be a pretty good Norlaris. Cause it's just gonna it's just gonna destroy it all, you know? Some people just want to watch the world burn. He did have the Caius. Ah, what a mistake. Uh, not. Let's take a look at his hand, actually. Yeah, not Caiusing was a mistake. So both players with their respective mistakes, but Gingerilla's mistake mattering a little bit less. He does have an armed wing here. He can start pressuring. Arm doing will get kind of walled out by Treeborn to a degree, but I think Gingerilla's top decks are a little bit better than Cocoa Bird's. Just because he has all that relinquished stuff, which is kind of like cloggy. And he has a bunch of frogs. Never mind. That's game. Okay, we're going to game three. Okay, so if you're Cocoa Bird, you just need to get Treeborn in the grave. Gingerilla wasn't aware of Treeborn, but this game he will be. He's going to be siding in Kaiku's soul releases, that type of thing. That's where we're at. That's it. That's all you need to know. Oh, man. I'm getting text messages. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, Upstart Goblin. What is even happening? I'm like falling apart in my chair. I wonder if this counts as the other relinquished. Honestly, if I was Coco Bird, I would just cite out all the relinquished cards. <laughs> no, I'm capping. I wouldn't cite in Vanities, though. I don't think it did him any favors that game. It was okay. It wasn't like... It wasn't bad because it pressured him. But he it didn't really pressure him quickly enough, if that makes sense. The compulsory was really the the knockout card there. It wasn't necessarily the Phantom. Rhoda for Greffer. That's going to happen. Greffer's going to summon itself, I'm assuming. Either that or we're just deck thinning. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. Actually, I don't know. Crazy game. This has actually been a really good match. All things considered. Let's see. What is even happening? You know? What is even happening? What is even happening? Pitch special grapher, pitch plague, send Sirocco, stack for plague, summon phantom, and get DD Crowed. <laughs> for the fans? The thing is, is like, even if he has Vayu as the last card in hand, even if he has Dark Creator on top of his deck, 
hitting a treeborn here is still fucking terrible. <laughs> like, it's still really, really bad for him. So going for all this, if he doesn't have the Vayu or the Dark Creator, is just bad. It's like just actively bad. Let's see if there's that treeborn. He does have the Jin too. Wow. The plague should be banished. Yep, correcting that now. And he didn't even have the Vayu, so. Gingerilla says you don't draw, which is true. You don't. Here comes the Dark Creator. Sorry, tired brain. Um, okay, it says no shuffle. All right, what are we doing now? He can even Norlaris again. All three Norlaris on turn one. Banish one Norlaris, special summon Sirocco. This gets lit up, no cap, by brain control. So there's that. Or relinquish. But if he doesn't have relinquish, then... I don't see him coming back from this. Mm. I think we just attack with both. You don't really need to summon the Greffer yet. You kind of want to keep the Phantom option on the table in case Gorse happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty keen to just attack with both here. Tough game. Tough game for Coco Bird. Uh, his first time playing against Norlaris. Hopefully he rewatches this and learns a thing or two, but main phase two is actually gonna banish the Norlaris. Bring out the Dark Reverend and pass. This puts three monsters in play. Sets him up for like a pretty big turn next turn if nothing happens. Here comes Substitute. That is something happening. Plague is gone too. Holy shit, that might just be game. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's pretty strong. I, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty fucking strong. That is that is a massive, massive, massive substitute reversal. Okay. And we're back in it. He does have one dupe in the grave, but as long as he can stick that second one, he should be fine. I don't really see no no! No! Coco Bird! You activated the substitute. I would 1000% shark him here. I would 1000% say you sacrifice substitute. I would be a shark if I was Gingerilla. I am not the better man here. Gingerilla, he understands this is for no prize whatsoever other than glory. He says, fuck it, I don't want to win that way. I want to win the natural way by summoning Dark Arm Dragon. <laughs> Where is this Dark Arm Dragon? Uh, never mind, man. It's been a long day. I think we've done, I think we did five or six eight mans today. There's just a lot of eight mans. Just all day eight mans. It might be the best way to play Edison is eight mans like as much as i love tournaments and as much as i love stakes i feel like no stakes eight mans is just goaded it's just like we're just here to fucking vibe you know we're not here to like we're not here to be sharks according to gingerilla i would be a shark but that's just me okay we're gonna pitch a phantom send of value i don't really like this i don't really like this line i think saving the phantom is important um, I think holding the Phantom and then setting up for Dark Arm Dragon. We didn't bring back the Treeborn there. That is a free Swap Frog. So not a good play unless he's on two Swap Frog. He might be on two. I know my Relinquish list only plays two. Passes the turn. We didn't bring back that Treeborn. Why the fuck did we not bring back Treeborn? This just doesn't make any sense. Now we're sacrificing a free-ass fucking Substitute. Targeting Sirocco, banishing it, dealing a thousand... This game is all sorts of messy from Coco Bird. I don't think I've ever seen him play this tired before. Uh, this is clearly tired Coco Bird. Coco tired, more like. Um, but he is drawing decently here. I think the one time I root for frogs is versus Norlaris. I'm like, yes, he top decked another monarch. Yes, let's go. Also, 
when it's based and has relinquished in it let's be real that's fucking awesome but at the same time i don't know ginger lash if i was him i would have sharked i would have done it i would have been like oh, i used the substitute and maybe he has no target so who knows but flip dino that blows up the dupe frog that can activate add back the swap frog but now you're locked under your own pack key. It doesn't target. It doesn't target. It doesn't target. It doesn't target. Two frog doesn't target. Two frog doesn't target. It doesn't target because it says deck or graveyard. Uh, you can undo the crow here. Oh. Yeah. This RTFC happens. Uh, even in a tournament, you would be able to do this because he said the word target. If that makes sense. So we would reverse back to before DD Crow. I had this come up in another video and a judge told me that it would reverse back to before he activated the Crow. So he would actually be allowed to take it back. I don't think it's going to matter that much because I think he's just cold here. Just bounce, bounce the Caius. What are you doing? Coco Bird's never played frogs before. He's never played frogs before and it's showing. B my brother in Christ, bounce your Caius. Holy shit. Just win the game with Caius. What are you doing? All right, GGs, GGs, GGs. Ah. Ah. Crazy game, crazy match. A lot of play, a lot of player error. Oh, I guess he had compulsory to bounce Kais anyway, but that's gonna be that. Shout out to Coco Bird for winning through, through extreme exhaustion with a powerful relinquished brew. So knew it was Compulse, had to flip Packy. Makes sense. All right, GG's to both players. Thank you guys for tuning in one last time. Xanadu, this Sunday, I will be there. And then RBET Orlando, October 7th. See you guys at both these tournaments. Peace.